Margaret Edith Peggy Lane is currently the Advanced Project Director at Virginia Tech University in Blacksburg, Virginia. The National Science Foundation sponsored program is designed to increase the number of women faculty in science and in engineering. She has been a director of diversity for the National Academy of Engineering as well as a fellow on the staff of Senator Bob Graham. Peggy has degrees in environmental and water resources engineering from Vanderbilt University and the University of North Carolina School for Public Health. She is a registered professional engineer. Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, I'm a past president of the Society of Women Engineers, a 20,000 member educational and service organization committed to establishing engineering as a highly desirable career for women. I'm currently employed as the advanced program director at Virginia Tech, but I'd like to note that I'm speaking today on behalf of the Society of Women Engineers and not on behalf of my employer. I want to thank you for providing this opportunity to discuss how Title IX relates to science, technology, engineering, and math, referred to as STEM fields, and the law's impact on STEM over the past 35 years. My comments will focus primarily on the discrimination that still exists in the academic STEM community today and how Title IX can be used as a tool to increase the participation of women in engineering. Women's participation in STEM fields has increased considerably since Title IX was enacted. As you noted in your opening remarks, Mr. Chairman, in 1972, women earned only 28.8% of STEM bachelor's degrees. By 2004, that number had increased to 49.2%, but the proportion of women varies widely among the individual STEM disciplines. Currently, women make up about 13% of the U.S. engineering workforce, up from about 5.8% 25 years ago. The number of women earning engineering degrees in the United States increased dramatically following the passage of Title IX, from around 2% in 1975 to 15% in 1985. I witnessed that increase firsthand as an engineering student in the late 1970s. When I earned my first engineering degree in 1980, I fully expected that increase to continue and for women engineers soon to no longer be unusual. When I found 20 years into my engineering career that women were still only 10% of the engineering workforce, I decided to change careers and work full time on this problem so we won't still be talking about these same issues 20 years from now. Gains in women's share of bachelor's and doctoral degrees in STEM disciplines have not translated into workplace parity, particularly in academia. Women are fewer than one in five faculty members in computer science, math, engineering, and the physical sciences. In engineering in particular, women account for just over one in 10 faculty members and are concentrated in the more junior ranks. At Virginia Tech, only six of the 138 faculty members holding the highest rank of professor in the College of Engineering are female, and we're not unusual in that regard. In fact, the American Society for Engineering Education reported in the fall of 2005 Virginia Tech had the third highest number of women in tenured and tenure-track engineering faculty positions in the U.S. At Virginia Tech, we found that 78% of male faculty, but only 41% of female faculty, believe that all faculty members are treated fairly regardless of gender. In an interview, a male engineering faculty member told us that the way women are treated in his department is a big issue. He said, quote, I'm friends with many of the women. They tell me stories about what's been going on. I can scarcely believe what people say to them. These findings are again not unique to Virginia Tech. A National Academy of Sciences study highlights the issues that impede women's progress in STEM. The report, Beyond Bias and Barriers, Fulfilling the Potential of Women in Academic Science and Engineering, points out that both bias and structural barriers built into academic institutions and the occupation of professor limit many women's ability to be hired and promoted. It also notes that women faculty are slower to gain promotion than men, are less likely to reach the highest academic rank, have lower salaries, and are awarded less grant money than their male colleagues. A 2004 GAO report requested by Senators Wyden and Boxer revealed that many educational institutions can't show compliance with the most basic requirements of Title IX. 
Following the report, NSF and NASA conducted Title IX reviews of a few STEM departments during 2006. While these selective reviews are a start, more widespread and systematic reviews are needed. Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, in many ways, the story of women in STEM is a positive one. Women are making progress in STEM education and careers, although more slowly than we would like. And the societal and institutional factors that slow women's advancement can be overcome with continued attention and tools such as Title IX. Therefore, we'd like to make the following recommendations. Conduct oversight hearings and call for enhanced agency enforcement, particularly an increase in the number and frequency of compliance reviews to ensure that federally funded education programs provide equal access and opportunity to all students and make those reviews available to the public. Authorize and fund a comprehensive public education campaign to raise awareness of Title IX and the importance of gender equity in education among students, parents, teachers, and administrators. Increase funding for programs that focus on attracting and retaining women and girls to non-traditional and STEM careers and removing institutional barriers to their success. Thank you again for the opportunity to present our views today.